What's up everybody? My name is Cap the Everyday Gamer and today I'm going to try and explain networking for you and how it relates to and helps with your gaming experience. I'm talking about Xbox specifically just because Microsoft has a set published number of ports and NAT settings that work for their network. Uh, Microsoft designed a lot of their networking requirements around the concept of NAT so I wanted to discuss that with you. There's a lot of um, key phrases and acronyms thrown around that can confuse a lot of people so I wanted to try and help clear it up and maybe help you get a better connection and get your system set up and configured properly for optimal gaming. First off let's talk about NAT. NAT stands for Network Address Translation and it's basically the go-between for data going from one device to another and in this case between Xboxes. It tells data how to get to where it's going, it directs traffic basically and the more open the connection is the more lenient NAT works as far as saying okay I recognize where this is coming from and I know where to send it next. There's a great little um, paragraph that explains it and I'll read it to you just because I think it, it describes how NAT works greatly. NAT's like a receptionist in a large office. Let's say you have left instructions with a receptionist not to forward any calls to you unless you request it. Later on, you call a potential client and leave a message for that client to call you back. You tell the receptionist that you're expecting a call from this client and to put her through. The client calls the main number to your office, which is the only number the client knows. When the client tells your receptionist that she's looking for you, the receptionist checks a lookup table that matches your name with your extension. The receptionist knows that you requested the call and therefore forwards the call to your extension. And that is pretty much in a nutshell how NAT works. When information comes in, packets, which all information transferred over the internet is done in packets or chunks of information. And each of these chunks of information, these packets, have port numbers, headers, the control information about where it came from and where it's going. Well, once it hits your router or your modem, it has to figure out which computer to go to. If you have, you know, five computers set up on your on your network, your router has to know when you're requesting certain web data, like Xbox information, where it's supposed to go. So NAT is set up to say, oh, by the way, this is Xbox traffic, and I need it to go to the Xbox. So it's basically like a go-between that tells incoming traffic where to go. Maybe like a traffic call. That's a better explanation, too. Now, Microsoft defines NAT the same way, but they have three different categories for it. And you've heard these before if you've been doing gaming at all for a while. And that's open, moderate, and strict. Um, these are the different levels of which NAT operates. An open NAT is what you want. It's ideal. It basically it makes everything real lenient as far as NAT concerns. It doesn't. It's not such like a, a warden. Basically, it doesn't have to thoroughly investigate every single thing that comes in. It basically says, "Okay, I recognize this traffic as the traffic that just came in, so I know where to send it." It's not going to re-regulate every single thing that's there and block any kind of things that it sees as malicious. Um, some people consider NAT based firewalls or sorry NAT based routers to be as good as firewalls and in an instance they are. Having NAT running on your router will very very limit the amount of data that can come in and go out so you know it can help restrict hackers from accessing your network. Well if it's set to really strict that's great as far as security goes but then data gets cut off because your router would be like I don't know what it is, I don't know where it's coming from, I don't recognize it, we're just going to not let it go anywhere. And it takes too long to filter it to try and figure out where it's supposed to go which is how you get lag. And if you have a restricted NAT setting set up, or it says strict or moderate, you may notice when you're gaming that it's hard to even get in a lobby or that voice communication cuts off or there are certain people on your friends list you can't talk to. Most routers have the ability to set your NAT setting. They have an option that we can turn it on or turn it off. Um, of course, once it's on, then it has the little three different tiers of strict, moderate, or open. Um, well, Microsoft and Xbox has three specific ports they want you to forward to your Xbox. Now, port forwarding means anytime information comes into your router, it looks at it and see what port it's coming in and then forwards it on to that corresponding port. All Xbox traffic transfers over these three ports you see on your screen here. So if you have all of these forwarded to the, your IP address of your Xbox, then any traffic coming in, it doesn't have to try and figure out where it goes. It automatically knows, okay, everything on UDP port 88 goes straight to the Xbox. I don't have to try and filter it or do anything. So most of your routers, like I said, will have 
Uh, port forwarding is really obvious, really easy. You just select the port range from and to, TCP, UDP, and the IP address of your Xbox. Now you get the IP address of your Xbox by going to the dashboard and scrolling all the way over past my Xbox to where it says system and then you'll click on that and you'll go down to network settings and you can see what your Xbox uh, IP address is going to go is going to be and then you just set that up in your router. Um, each router is done differently of course everybody has their own way to configure it so the best thing I can recommend is go to a website called portforward.com it's listed on the screen down there and from there you can look up your router um, and it'll have step-by-step -step instructions and screenshots for forwarding your port for opening your NAT configuring ports all that other information it's a very useful site so I highly recommend you go check it out and that will help you get your NAT settings open properly um, having these ports forwarded to Xbox sometimes will trigger your Xbox to view it as a NAT setting and allow more information to come in it'll view this as being open so these three port need to be open all times. Another important factor in your quality of service basically and how well your connection is is your upload and download speed of course which everybody touts that um, but it's also your ping and your quality of service. Now ping is how long it takes for your Xbox to send information to another Xbox and back again. That's a ping. It's from A to B and from B back to A. That's one ping the shorter amount of time in that which is measured in milliseconds the shorter amount of time the better now where a lot of people run into um, issues when they're trying to measure their speed is they just look at their upload and download while those are important yes but ping is the most important of this and something else is if you're going to do a test of your ping you need to check not only just locally but further distances and I'll show you what I mean Okay, here you can see I have my download and upload speed. I have right about 30 down and 4 up. I did a local ping test. I'm in Texas, so I'll ping Dallas. And you can see I got a 31 millisecond ping, just a little bit of jitter, and my quality of service is A. Most of the time it's A+. Plus. This is great as far as, you know, this is what it normally wants you to do when you do a ping test. Oh, by the way, you can do these tests at pingtest.net or speedtest.net. Recommend both of those for checking your uh, line speed and quality and all that. But anyway, as I said, you can see my ping Dallas locally. It's, you know, less than 50 miles from where I'm at, so I got a really good ping. That's excellent. I look at that and say, oh, good, I got a great connection. I got a good ping. Jitter's low. I should be good to go. That will be the case if you're managed to match up with a bunch of people locally. But if you happen to match up with somebody across the country, like this second test over here in San Francisco, see my ping is now 81 milliseconds with a jitter of 5 and quality of service is B. It's because it's going such a much further distance back and forth. So even though I can have a rocking connection to anywhere locally, and that is a good thing for sure, but considering how games work and it matches you up, you know, with people all around your region you may end up being cross-state connection with people which I'm sure you've probably seen before too so you need to take into account that even though you can ping your local you know grocery store with a 10 millisecond ping that's only great if everybody's playing at that store so those I just wanted to show you this as a typical example of I have a great internet speed but from here to San Francisco and back it's still you know 1800 miles so there's a lot of data loss that can happen between here and there if they happen to get host and now talking about quality of service or QoS. Um, and networking quality of service is rather lengthy and complex and you know cumbersome to try and sort through. So I'll try and make it as easy to understand as possible. Um, in gaming terms, and the easiest way I can word it is, as I mentioned earlier, everything over the internet is transferred in packets and in you know chunks of data. You know, one, two, three, four, five. Let's say that's one piece of information. Your Xbox is sending to another one. Well, going with internet transmission protocols, um, it has to be able to get all of those packets and it has to be able to read them in order. So if you send you know, your data and it comes over and goes 1, 3, 4, 5, but it's missing 2, going by TCP, it'll wait for 2 to get there before it you know, finally puts it all together and can read it and knows what to do with it and then send it back out. Whereas UDP, as mentioned earlier before too, would just say, if I'm missing two, I'll drop the whole thing, you can start over. So that causes lag. So those two work hand in hand in making sure that your internet um, data is transferred back and forth properly there. But you can see how having a good quality of service is better. So when you do any of these speed tests there and you see 
quality of service is high, you know, the higher the percentage, the better. Uh, you're never going to get 100% just because there's no way for your end and their end to be the exact same. And the number of hops or routers and switches and ISPs that your data has to go through to get from A to B is astounding. I mean, you think about how many different things your information goes through just to get outside your house. You have, you know, your Xbox through your cable into your router, into your modem, through the cable back out to your ISP and all of their series of routers and servers, you know, back out to the series of pipes that makes up the internet and then finally reaches its destination and then goes back down the same series of pipes to get to their Xbox and then repeat the process back. You know, do that, you know, a million times in an hour and you see where you can lose some information and that's where quality of service comes in is making sure that all the information you send gets there and gets to the right order and gets there fast because you can massive blast out these packets that I'm talking about you could just say get out there as fast as humanly possible and get there in under 10 milliseconds but if they're in the wrong order of missing packets then it's not going to work anyway so that's why it's important well, that's the general basics of how networking works in the simplified terms, the most simplest of terms I can put it in. I hope it made sense to you guys, and I hope that helps you out. Um, I don't have any intention of being everyone's personal tech support. No offense. I do this for a living, so I get enough of it you know, on a day-to-day -day basis or whatever, and there's way too many people out there to be able to help them all. So if you have any general questions about anything I said or covered, you can leave it in the comment section below and I'll try and get to it or you can you know private message me but please don't start asking hey can you configure my router can you walk me through how to set up a DMZ or any of that because I'm just not going to be able to do that guys so I apologize but anyway I hope you found this video useful I'd appreciate if you would you know rate the video thumbs up um, subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet by clicking above and do tell your friends about this you know share the video on Facebook and Twitter and you can follow me on there as well and I will talk to you later